I want to continue the tutorial on lining to just give you a few more techniques, especially in this image. There's still a few more things that we need to uh, kind of hammer out that don't look right. Uh, and we could probably spend a lot of time. Lighting takes a lot of time and effort. We could finish up this leg. We really need to take out some of these shadows. But I'm going to show you some different techniques uh, that I might use. And so to do that, I'm going to kind of skip through this and just show you little bits and pieces that I hope will help you. One thing is I might light the entire scene with some layers that aren't clipped. They actually do affect all the layers below it just to give some cohesion. I'm going to create a new layer above all my layers, both background and foreground. I'm going to select white as my foreground color. I'm going to bring my brush size up and I'm going to bring my opacity all the way up and because I'm, I'm thinking it might look nice to have a little bit of a glare coming through as if the bright light is right behind her right on the edge maybe she's eclipsing it just a bit I'm going to take a soft edge brush with my hardness all the way down to zero and just paint a white spot there now that doesn't look natural right now and I need to change it up a little bit to make it look a little more cool so I'm going to take this layer and I'm going to try it on overlay mode just see what it looks like. I like that. It adds some dynamic uh, highlights there. I'm going to duplicate it. You can do that by going down and dropping it onto the create new layer or you can hit control J on your shortcut. The duplicate I'm going to go back to normal mode on. Take it off my overlay mode. Just drop the opacity down ever so slightly. And, and give it kind of a haloed effect. Now I could imagine that if we really were shooting this with a camera and the light was right there and it was coming out there might be uh, a, some light rays escaping. So I'm going to create some light rays that are escaping through her arm and I can do that a couple of different ways but one of the ways I'm going to do it is I'm just going to stay on this layer that has low opacity 38% I'm going to get my lasso tool and I'm going to select uh, the polygonal lasso tool. I'm just going to grab in here and create some stabbing light rays with this lasso tool. Hold down shift, click and create another one. And my image is going a little crazy on me there. Maybe I should zoom out a little bit. Again, hold down shift and create another one. And we'll stick with that for now. Now I'm going to fill them with my foreground color, which is still white. So in this case, the way I can do that is by hitting Alt Backspace. It will automatically fill your selection with the foreground color. I'm going to deselect it, Control D, or you can go up to the Select, Deselect. And now I have some stabbing light rays, but they just do not look right. They look very jagged, not realistic at all. Uh, so I'm going to blur them. Go in here, blur, Gaussian blur. I'm going to drag my Gaussian, in this case, up to about 4.7. Hit OK. And uh, because I think they should be fading out, maybe a little less noticeable, I'm going to create a layer mask here. Get my gradient tool choosing black and white for my gradient. I'm going to go over here and get radial gradient as the type of gradient. Now I'm just going to click from the center of where I think that light point will be out a little ways and release that and create a gradient on that layer mask. And what that does is it makes it more visible right at the center point. It makes the, the light fade as it goes away. So you'll see on my layer mask that's a soft round gradient there. And if I turn it on and off, you can see the difference. So we've just got some subtle light bars coming out uh, through there. Now, I can create some lighting effects on the wall, because if it was really that strong of a light, we might expect some lighting effects on the wall. And the way I can do that is I can just go back down to this layer that has overlay that I created this effect with. And I can grab my brush again, maybe drop the opacity down a little bit to uh, in the 30s, 40s range. White still is my foreground color and I can just paint it on the walls. Some highlights as though that light were really hitting it. We're intensifying the idea of the light 
to our viewers as though that light is really coming out and strongly hitting these walls. I could create a whole new layer for this if necessary, but I like to keep my layer numbers to a minimum since uh, sometimes layers can, can get pretty cumbersome when you get a lot of them in an image. So now I've created kind of a light trail coming out here and uh, I want to lighten up my entire front figure just a little bit. So I'm going to go back down to her creating a new adjustment in the curves. It's going to be automatically clipped as a clipping mask because I already have some more clipping masks that are there and I'm going to drag it up just slightly towards the white again creating a lightened effect. Okay, And that's looking better. I am missing a few things I could do. Go back to my overlay layer where I was painting on the walls here you see. Still with my white brush, I'm going to add some to the floor. I'm just expecting to see some real light trails from what we're now um, selling to our viewers as a vibrant light trail. Now you'll notice this is also hitting uh, my model, my foreground figure, and if I want, if I feel like it doesn't belong there, I can get my eraser tool and take some of that off. It's starting to shape up. You can obviously you can go back and kind of enhance this uh, several different ways. I want to darken down the edges of my image so it's not distracting and it really focuses on the center point. So I'm going to put a levels adjustment above my entire image. Grab the output level white slider, drag it to the left. Grab the center input, drag it to the right. Hit OK. Now I just want it in select places. So again, I'm going to fill this layer mask with black using the edit fill, use black. And then I'm going to grab my round soft brush, bring the opacity back up. White is my foreground color and paint back in some of that darkness I just got rid of. What this does is it really heightens the viewer's uh, impression of the backlight to where it focuses on it. Now a few more things I need to do. I really need to remove this bluish color. I can do this several different ways. I can replace the color and uh, I'll show you a technique for that. You can go up to your brush, choose color replacement tool. Make sure you're on the layer you want to work on. In this case it's my figure. And I want to replace that blue with perhaps black and so I'm just going to paint that blue with black. Now you'll notice it's not turning it black, it's taking the hue or the color of the black and replacing it with that which is actually turning it kind of a light gray which is fine, that's kind of what I want. Just continue to paint over that where I think her hair should be. Now on her face I want it to change to the face color so I'm just going to sample the face color and replace the color that way and uh, it's just another technique for getting rid of unwanted color hues that you don't necessarily like. And here I go, just continue with that. And you can do it as needed. You can see there's plenty of places I can practice that on and get rid of it. It's a little bit of a tedious job, but it really helps make the image look uh, more cohesive and the lighting in the end will look more cohesive. I want to get rid of some of it on the leg, so I'll just paint in color of the leg that I want. Zoom back out and it looks much better. Now as a final touch, because there's usually an overall color cast in any room, I'll a lot of times put a solid color layer above my entire image. Just go in to add uh, adjustment layer, solid color, and choose what I think the overall feel might look like. In this case, coming from an outside light, I'm going to choose kind of a maybe a light orange hit OK. I'm going to set it to color mode which you'll notice gives it a very impressive contrast and then I'm going to drop it down. Drop it down to where it's only about 20 percent opaque. This brings some real cohesion into the idea that the color of the light is the same on everything in the room. Some shadow could be added under her feet. We're not going to get into that. This was just for some lighting techniques. I hope this helps you out.